the automotive industry is going through a very interesting, exciting, and at the same time, very challenging phase. Uh, well, most of us know about the exciting part and the interesting part as well. But what are the challenges lying ahead? What are the challenges right around the corner? Uh, and how can they be overcome? Uh, to, uh, to discuss with us more on this, we have with us Prashant Dorsami, uh, President and CEO of Continental Automotive India. Prashant, thanks for talking to ET Auto. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, tell us the, the challenges around the corner, uh, two, three key challenges that you see uh, and uh, the scale of those challenges and how could they be bypassed or addressed? <laughs> okay. I think, uh, so once the challenge is... Uh, Today, we are talking about software-defined vehicles, right? And the challenge is, how do you separate hardware and the software? That's still not happened in the automotive industry. Today, if you see, the development cost is so high because hardware and software is coupled. And unfortunately, you cannot carry over the similar product on multiple platforms. Then you line up in spending more R&D again if you have to develop this. What that could do with the software defined is you are separating the hardware and the software, you have a middleware. So then always it is upgradable. I think that's one challenge which industry is facing. So one from the perspective of resources, financial resources, it requires in terms of front loading. The second is when you bring in this technology, safety is much more critical because the use cases in the automotive is much, much uh, bigger than any other field. So I think these are the two challenges. Having said that, I'm sure it's a matter of time that in one or two years, we'll be migrating to software-defined vehicle, which will help the industry in terms of compressing the total development timelines, maybe two years for developing a new car, or maybe one year for developing a new variant. Number two, it also gives the opportunity for uh, uh, OEMs uh, beyond end of production to even sell their products through over the year. And the third is uh, the amount of effort required in terms of testing because many things could be done in cloud. And we talk about uh, code to road in one day. Mm -hmm. So how would we make it possible? And fourth is certainly in terms of the quantum of data which is collected while the vehicle is on road, which will help us to improve the product performance over a period of time. And you talked about SDV, yeah. uh, and now we are just entering the SDV era. Uh, what also comes to mind is, uh, which we obviously would also uh, need, uh, there will be a spike in demand for, let's say, semiconductors. Yeah. Uh, we have seen a phase, a very challenging phase for the global industry. Uh, without even entering into the SUV area. So do you think that, that is, there's, the industry should brace itself for another round of such a, such a challenging phase? I think uh, looking at the current uh, forecast, uh, there could be an one more round in Q3, Q4 of 2025. I think uh, industry has learned a lot during the last semiconductor crisis. To some extent, we have made our own processes, forecasting to an extent foolproof, but still I think there's going to be some amount of impact industry will face in last quarter of 2025. That's the projection as of today. But it may not be as severe as what we witnessed maybe may a not, couple of yes, years? Yes, may not be as severe, as, as prolonged as what we saw a couple of years back, but certainly there's going to be some amount of mismatch which we would see in the last quarter of 2025, and maybe plus or minus one or two quarters, depending on how the volumes uptake across the globe. So, which means that the production forecasting and everything uh, planning has to be all the more precise and Absolutely. smarter, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and talking about uh, the SDV area, uh, your uh, the uh, global tech center in Bangalore for Conti is uh, is a very strategic you uh, know a, a place hub for content globally also. And I believe you are you have developed the new gen radar there, and uh, your team is also uh, working on autonomous driving technologies, including like something like uh, autonomous parking maybe. Yes, uh, uh, for uh, one of our Indian OEMs, we are working on. An uh, assisted uh, parking, uh, what we call up assisted park, automated park assist. Yes, you will see that uh, uh, in next uh, maybe eight months time. 
okay. <laughs> on roads. And we are working with a couple of other OEMs as well, some of the assisted functions as well. While there's a talk, there's a draft for a mandation for assisted functions sometime in 2027. But we know in India, we have one of the biggest practices, the autonomous mobility, where we have the complete responsibility for the core development of even radar as well. So, right, I so it's a global CUE for autonomous. Global CUE for, for autonomous uh, mobility, autonomous mobility. And also, as we speak, uh, this was showcased in CES 2024, which in collaboration with Aurora, there'll be an autonomous truck, L4 truck, uh, which could fly from east to west coast in the US. So this has a f uh, backup system with fail-safe uh, uh, assistance, which you'll see reality in 2027 as well. That's that's on uh, and in the in the Western world, but in the uh, in this part of the country uh, world, it will be the assisted parking, which uh, Continental will uh, first uh, deploy its autonomous. When it comes to headers, now uh, as I said, we need to split into assisted, automated, and autonomous. Autonomous is a long dream for India, mm. because this is not just vehicle being equipped with the technology, but it also has to be infrastructure, road signs, driving discipline, traffic. So there are many things which has to come together. So keeping that in mind, I think the immediate one we see is assisted function, which is an extended safety function, certainly which should help uh, uh, Indian traffic conditions and also bringing down the fatalities. And the next is could be L2 plus, which is more of a convenient automated functions like automatic park assist or adaptive cruise control. So yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. functions. Yeah. So. And lastly, uh, you were also uh, you know, looking at expanding your you know, tech center yeah. with uh, perhaps another hub yeah. in India. Uh, have you taken a call on that? And if yes, and to what extent would you scale up the the you know, resources and the strength of your team? Yeah, at this point of time, yes, still we are doing a study. Uh, once we conclude on the uh, Thing certainly we'll get back to you, Samantha. But as we speak, India continues to grow because India provides a lot of uh, talented pipeline with the software content increasing, and most of our products are related to software continental globally. I think India is playing a crucial role, uh, and we continue to play a crucial role. Okay, thank you. On that note, Prashant, thank you always so pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. There you heard uh, Prashant Doriswamy, President and CEO of Continental Automotive India drawing a picture for us in terms of the challenges that lie ahead as well as the technology developments that are taking place especially on in the areas of ADAS and autonomous driving and uh, and how Continental is also looking at expanding its uh, engineering presence engineering team in India on that note thanks for watching this interview take care goodbye